everyone thank you so much for joining me today so today we're going to be playing with the gel press i've had some new stencils from rubber dance uh, i believe it's the first time they've ever done stencils and so i wanted to give them a play and what better to use them on than a gel press so this is my six by six gel press i'm just um using my glass mat to attach it to and these are the stencils that I've purchased from Rubber Dance. I'll leave links in the description box below because I can't remember the names of these stencils. Uh, but I'll pop everything that I've used today uh, down below. So you'll be able to have a look at those if you want to. So I'm just adding some acrylic paint to my gel press. And I'm just using my brayer just to take off some of the excess. And then I'm just going to add some marks using my stencil and a little bit more acrylic paint. And we're just going to brayer it on. Uh, pull the prints off. This is just really basic playing um, and I think that's the key with the gel press. You're just having fun. You never really know exactly what the print you're going to pull is going to be like. I'm definitely not an expert at all when it comes to gel printing. I know there's some really amazing techniques out there uh, but this is just a video showing me playing and then like a true card maker we can end up with stacks of gel printed backgrounds but how do we turn them into cards or what do we use them for? So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you some cards at the end, uh, what I've used some of these gel prints for and how I've turned them into cards. So I really hope that you find that useful. Of course, with gel printing, you can use different mediums. So if you don't have acrylic paint, you can use um, Distress Oxide or Distress Ink pads. Um, you'll just get a variety of different uh, techniques. And of course, you don't have to use stencils. You can use stamps as well. Uh, I've used uh, one of my stamps to the side there on one of these prints, but you can use rubber stamps, acrylic stamps, uh, photopolymer stamps, or even just stamps that you've made yourself out of fun foam. So here's some of the backgrounds that I've created today. Um, there's a right mix. Some I'm really not happy with. I think they look rubbish, but some we can definitely use and turn into cards and projects today. Um, I've generally, if I wasn't happy with the print on the one side, I've then done another print on the back. So some are double sided for that reason. I'm just picking out a few that I want to play with today that I want to turn into cards and so that's what we're going to do. So I've got that mark making stamp set from Rubber Dance which I'm going to be using and first of all I'm just going to trim down one of the gel prints to three and a half inches squared. So to add some interest I'm going to add some white embossing powder. I'm just using my anti-static bag there and I'm going to ink up this stamp with some wow embossing ink. Once I've done that I'm going to stamp it down onto the gel print and then I'm going to pick out another stamp as well it's like a postmark uh, stamp and I'm just going to use that as well I'm then going to add the white embossing powder and tap off any excess and then we're going to heat set that uh, with my heat tool now because I've used very cheap copy paper for my gel printing uh, I do get some quite bad warping when I'm heat setting the embossing powder but um, we can easily remedy that I'm going to be adding a matte layer anyway and it's going to be being then attached to a card base, so that'll all help to flatten it out. So I've just got a piece of orange cardstock that I've just trimmed down to three and three quarters squared, and I'm going to attach that three and a half inch squared gel print background to that as well. Once that's adhered and it's nice and flat, we're then going to add our focal element. Now, I recently purchased these gorgeous stamps from Rubber Dance, along with the stencils that I showed you earlier. And I really want to use these mushrooms on these cards. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. And I had a very happy hour just watercolouring uh, some lovely stamped images. All of these are from Rubber Dance. And yeah, so I'm just going to pick out a focal element for this card. Uh, I'm trying to go with the Rubber Dance mood board colours. They've got like a, a little competition thing in their Facebook group. Uh, and the colours this month were like pink, uh, a bit like an ochre or mustardy yellow, uh, blue and like a turquoise. So... Uh, I'm kind of going with that colour theme, loose, very loosely though. Um, so as you can see with a stamped image, of course you can always adapt it to what suits your project. So I've just trimmed off some of that foliage at the bottom uh, and then I can just stick that uh, where I want it. I've got another little mushroom as well. Now for the sentiments, I've got these gorgeous stamps and I love these. I love all the different fonts on them and all the different words and basically they're like a build your own sentiment stamp. So I'm just going to use one of the stamps today and again I'm going to white um, heat emboss this on some black cardstock. 
It's really important when you're trying to capture fine details when embossing that you use the anti-static powder bag. That really is the best way to kind of make sure that the embossing powder is really crisp when you've finished it. Of course, you can use a little paintbrush or tap it as I'm doing here if you've got any powder where you don't want it. But it does save you a lot of time if you've used the anti-static powder bag first and it just makes for a much crisper heat embossed image. So once they're heat set, I've done two of them. One will be just for my stash, but I'm just going to cut out the words that I want to use on this card. So I decided to go with creativity is the adventure. I'm just going to trim those down and then we're going to attach all these focal elements to the front of our card. I'm just using some cosmic shimmer glue on the back of the first mushroom. And then on the second one, I'm just going to add some foam pads uh, just so that it's got a little bit of dimension so we can just raise that up on the front of the card it just gives for a little bit of added interest as well i'm going to then attach the extra leaves just using some more glue and then i'm just going to attach the sentiment down again also using the cosmic shimmer glue so i think um the only thing left to add to this is some black splats and for that i'm going to use my posca pen so i'm just going to give it a good shake i'm just going to get a scrap of uh, paper just to get it going and then i can use that for some splats I did want a few smaller ones, so I just bring in my paintbrush for that. And then we can just attach that to the card blank. And so there's the finished first card. So for the second card, again, I'm going to bring in a gel print and I'm going to trim it down to three and a half inches squared. I'm just really picking out the bits of the gel print that I really want to be in the background. So I'm trimming off all those excess bits. I've got a piece of pink cardstock that I'm trimming down to three and three quarters squared, uh, but I do end up not using that. I thought I'd use it as a matte layer, but I changed my mind later on, as you'll see. Now, I'm just trying to work out um, what focal elements I want to use on this card, and I decide to go with this uh, bluey green yellow mushroom that I've, I've watercolored. So I'm just going to fussy cut that out with my Cutter B scissors. All of these images have been watercolored on Pink Frog watercolor cardstock. Um, you can purchase it directly from them, I believe, and also from Craft Stash. Uh, I have to say, I'm really impressed with it. Um, I had been using Bockingford, uh, but it is a slightly creamy colour. And I actually really like the white, um, the whiteness of this watercolour paper. And even though it's very mildly textured, um, it's still great for stamping. Now, I'm just going to add a few more of these elements uh, stamping in the background. I'm just using some Versafine Onyx Black ink there to just stamp those images. Next, I'm going to bring in some texture paste and I'm going to use that through this stencil. Uh, I've just got a palette knife. Uh, this is the opaque matte texture paste from Ranger. And I'm just going to spread some of that in, in both corners of the uh, card front. Once the texture paste is dry, I then adhere it down to a panel of black cardstock that's three and three quarters squared. I did change my mind on using the pink. Um, so I've, I've set this on black cardstock. I've already cut out my focal elements. Um, so I'm just going to attach some foam tape to the back of that mushroom and then we'll stick that onto the card front in the bottom corner. I've also got some solid black leaves that I've stamped from the stamp set and I'm just going to attach those behind the raised mushroom and I'm just using some glue to just attach that down. For the sentiment, I've cut out the words explore for small treasure because I kind of feel like mushrooms are small treasure. So I felt that was apt for this little card. And again, I'm just using the quick grab glue to attach those down. All we're left to do then is attach it to our card front, uh, a card base, sorry. And I'm just using a small four, and a, uh, four inches squared card blank. And there's the finished card. So for the third card, I've got this gel pr print and again, I'm just going to trim it down to three and a half inches squared. I'm picking out the bits of the gel print that I really want to keep. And of course, any of the scraps I'll be putting to one side for a later project. So I'm not going to be throwing anything away. I've got a three and three quarter squared matte layer, which is navy blue cardstock. And then I'm going to use this stencil with some black soot distress oxide just to add a little bit more interest to that card front. Um, I'm using a blending brush from Funky Fossil Designs and I find these are great for ink blending through stencils. So next, I'm just going to add a little bit of stamping detail to the um, gel prep print. And I, again, I'm just using that Mix It Up stamp set. Again, I'll leave links to all of these products in the description box below. I've already gone ahead and cut out our focal elements for this card. Uh, so I'm just going to attach the leaves down using some glue. 
and then I'm going to attach the bigger mushroom down using some glue and the smaller one I'll pop up on some foam tape. Um, I think these mushrooms are so lovely. I just think they're so delightful for small cards. Um, and they really just, they're just quirky, whimsical. I think everybody likes mushrooms. I think the variety in nature is just so amazing. So yeah, it's just uh, just really nice to kind of put these kind of elements on a card. Um, so yeah, uh, the sentiment I chose for this card was earth art because again, I think mushrooms are so pretty. And I'm just going to add some splats, uh, this time white splats using my Posca pen. Once I'm finished, I'll just glue that down to the matte layer and attach it to the card blank. And then that's the third finished card for today. So thank you so much for joining me. I really hope that you've enjoyed this journey of creating gel prints and then creating finished cards. I hope that it's given you some inspiration to use your gel prints. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. And thank you so much for watching. Take care.